So I want to start by receiving a uh, some socks. So I'm going to basically buy some socks here, some socks, and I'll buy a thousand socks at a dollar each. And this was dated on June 1st. Okay, so that's the first example. So a thousand socks for a dollar each on June 1st. And I'm going to hit uh, save here, and then go ahead and duplicate this bill. And this one's going to be on July 1st, and it's going to be the same thousand units for two dollars each. And I hit save and close. Okay, so when I go into my, let's go into my inventory evaluation report. So I'm going to go to reports, inventory, inventory evaluation summary. What is my average cost right now? What is my average cost of my socks? Uh, let me make this a little bit bigger here. My average cost is $1.50. Make the font bigger. Okay, it's $1.50. However, this is my average cost as of July 9th. My average cost on June 30th is $1, okay? Very much, very much date-driven, okay? So let's just show you the example in a, in a profit and loss report. I think it's going to make the most sense. So let me pull a P&L. And by the way, when I do training for my clients, especially if I want to demonstrate, you know, how cash basis work or how, you know, something like this will work, um, I usually just show a P&L like this of, of both months. Okay, and let me make this font bigger. That way you can kind of see um, live, you know, what, what, what's going on here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create an invoice. So I'm going to go to customers, create invoice, and I'm going to sell to my one customer here. I'm going to sell them 100 units of those socks. And I'm going to date this July 2nd. And I'll hit save and close. And my average cost is $1.50. Okay, that's, you know, that was two plus one divided by two, $1.50. However, if that invoice shows up, let me just show you this. If that invoice actually shows up not in July, but in June, because if you remember, I had bought the other units, the second batch of units for $2 each. I had bought that for $2. I hit save and close. My average cost is now, and let me hit refresh here. My average cost is now $1. Okay, so that proves to you that that average cost is based on dates. So now the next question is, and I'll, I'll ask you to put an answer here on the chat box, is if I create the same, uh, an, another invoice for 100 units, let's say 500 units on, on let's just call that, I'm going to create one more invoice for 900 units in July. What is going to be my new average cost? I'll do a thousand units to make it very easy. So put in your chat box, what is the new average cost now? Okay, so somebody's saying a dollar fifty. No, it's actually not, because the new average cost is nine hundred units that are left times one dollar plus two thousand units times two dollars. So now it's not going to be one point fifty. It's probably going to be one point four something. So let me just show you that example. So I'm going to go ahead and create an invoice. And I'll date this invoice in July now. So I have this invoice in July. And I'll sell 100 units. And where is my socks? There it is. OK. And then and I hit save and close. Notice that my new average was 1.5 something. So it's no longer 1. Uh, 1.5 exactly. It, it's going to be 1.52, whatever. Because what it does is it recalculates average cost each time. This is why. Some people prefer FIFO because with FIFO, I know that those units would be a dollar. And when I'm done with, you know, exhausting those those that are a dollar, then we go over to the ones that are two dollars. But what confuses the heck out of people is that average cost is being recalculated in real time. OK, now let me show you something else that's going to just throw you uh, uh, off, you know, off here. Now, what if I create what if I backdate an invoice? So I'll, I'm going to keep that invoice for July for 100 units that the current cost is 1.53. What if I backdate an invoice in June and I sell 900 units? Will my July average cost change and will my financial state statements change? So let me show you that. So let me let me repeat the example. Uh, and I, I'll, I'll have you do some, some, uh, so put something in the chat. If I create an invoice right now on June, June date, right bef before I purchase the second set for two dollars, for all 900 units in June, what is going to be my new average cost in July? Okay. So does anybody have here an answer? Put it here to the chat. 
Okay, some, some people are saying a dollar, some people are saying two dollars. So let me show you exactly what I mean. So um, I'm gonna go to customers and go to create invoice, and then I'm gonna date this invoice in June, and I'm gonna sell 900 units. So I'm gonna sell 900 units, and I'm gonna select here socks, and there's 900 units, and I'm gonna hit save and close. So notice what happens is when I finish selling all my units that are in June, uh, my average cost in June now reset to a dollar. So instead of being whatever the other uh, amount was, and um, and now my July average cost recalculated to two dollars. So it almost feels a little bit FIFO. <laughs> but this is the thing: um, QuickBooks is constantly, constantly, constantly recalculating average cost. This is why it is so crucial that when you close the period. You, you, you put a closing date password on that thing because if somebody creates a transaction that affects an inventory item, you're going to retroactively go forward and uh, recalculate everything. So that's so it's 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 very much uh, date driven. Right. Um, and, and, and like somebody's commenting here, it's not period driven, it's date driven. Exactly. So it has nothing to do with the period, it has to do with the dates. And if I move if I move transactions around, my average cost changes. So I'll give you another example here. So I'm going to go ahead and move. The same example, I'm going to move this invoice from, from June 30th to July 4th, and now we're going to see that our average cost is going to be moved around again. Okay, now take a, take a look at that. So my average cost got now moved around again because it got, again, it got recalculated. So for the month of, of, of June, right, when I had bought inventory and the only inventory I bought was a was dollar, it did it for one dollar. For the month of July, it recalculated. To, to, to make things even more crazy here, I'm going to grab, I'm going to take that bill that I that I received. Let me go here to vendors. And, and I may, may be going <laughs> overboard with this, um, but let me go back and look at that bill for two dollars. There's the bill for two dollars. I'm going to change the date and put this uh, sometime in May. So I'm going to take this rule back sometime in May, and we're going to see now what's going to happen is my average cost got recalculated again, and everything else got calculated to uh, 1.5. Is is that interesting? <laughs> yeah, I, I found that just extremely entertaining to just uh, when I was going through that example myself to just double check that I was presenting the right thing. But it, it's the one thing; it just bothers me how average cost works. Now, by the way, this makes total logical sense, but 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 it it will take probably some time for you to uh, you know to to practice it and think about it in order to really get it uh, uh, up and running. Okay, let's do um, average cost versus FIFO. So let's start by summarizing real quick uh, the concept of average cost. We're going to make it really simple. One sock for $5 on the 10th of June, another sock for $10 with the 20th of June. Let's just make this even simpler. We'll make it just one. So we're going to buy one of each, two different days. Then uh, after we purchase both of these, we're going to have we're going to sell one sock on the 30th and the average cost is going to be 750 and then we're going to sell one sock later and then the average cost is going to be 750 so this is the example we're going to show you to make it as a framework to show you how fifo works so there is my quickbooks file where i already have the two bills in here so i have one bill here for the $5 and then I have the second bill there for $10. So I want to make sure that's there. This is the only two pieces of inventory item that we have. And then we get to see here the running average cost. So what I like to do is create uh, the invoices that we talked about in the example. So I'll do one invoice here. And we'll do a, a random customer here. And then we'll select the, the product we're going to sell. And we're going to sell just one. And we we're going to give this a... June 30th date and we're going to go ahead and hit save and close and we're going to sell, sell it for $12 uh, that way when we look at our profit and loss we see it very clear here that we have the revenue for $12 and here is our cost of goods sold for $750 I'll make the font bigger here just in case you're working on a smaller screen so there it is very clear $12 average cost $750 so let me go ahead and create the other invoice that we were going to date uh, in July at some point so a couple, a couple days later and we'll be for the exact same product, the same quantity, and then we'll pick the customer and we hit save and close. And then we get to see again, same exact concept. So what happens with average cost is that the gross profit on the product doesn't change based on the timing in which you purchase. 
That's the concept of average cost. Now let's move over to the next example here, which is taking the exact same case, uh, and this is going to be one as well to just make it easier. So it will be the exact same case. We'll buy them at the same time, but now under FIFO, we're going to see that the cost of the product is going to change based on the, uh, the quantities. So as I run down my first lot, which is the first, sort of the first group that I purchased, which is that first one for $5, the first invoice is going to have a cost of $5 and the second invoice a cost of $10. So you're going to see very clear how profitable profitability changes as we make this change. So I'm going to go ahead and go under edit uh, preferences, and then I'm going to click on where it says inventory. And I'm going to go to company preferences and I'm going to click on advanced inventory settings. Now, something very important to keep in mind, this only works in QuickBooks Enterprise with advanced inventory enabled. One more time, it only works in QuickBooks Enterprise with advanced inventory enabled. So you have to have the highest version of QuickBooks, which is QuickBooks Enterprise with advanced inventory enabled. And also it needs to be version, I believe is 2011 and above anything newer than 2011. So I click on advanced inventory settings and you see one of the tabs here is FIFO. There it is, FIFO, first in, first out. And then we'll click on this little check mark here basically to enable FIFO. And then we tell it, you know, as of when we want the system to recalculate all of our sales based on the new FIFO method. So I'm gonna tell, tell it to do it all the way from the beginning of the year. And I'm gonna go ahead and click okay and then click OK. Then it's going to ask me to close everything and open it again. We're completely OK with that. We'll hit OK on that. And then we'll let the whole thing refresh. And then I'll go ahead and pull a, I had a profit and loss here already set up. And I'm going to show you hit refresh and make the font a little bigger. And we can see really clear how this changed. Now we see that the cost on the first invoice is $5 and the cost on the second invoice is $10. Okay, that's because uh, the, the valuation of the product, it's based on uh, the, the, the timing in which you sell it. Actually, not the timing, I apologize. It's based on running out of those products. So let's do a, a separate example here. I'm gonna keep the same information running, but I'm gonna work with, with bigger quantities. That way it's, it's just a lot clearer. So let me go into the vendor section and the bill. <coughs> And then let me go into my very first bill and I'm going to go ahead and buy 10. So from my, my first lot, my first batch per se, I'm going to order uh, 10 of them and I'll hit save. And then on my, on my second lot, I'll also order 10 and then we'll kind of see how, how this plays out with more quantities because, you know, with a, just with one unit, it wasn't as, as clear. So I'm buying 10 of each. So basically I have two lots. The first 10 cost me $5 each. The second 10 cost me $10 each. So I'll hit save and close. And now we're going to see, let me just make, update these numbers. Now we're going to see how our profit and loss is going to change. And you notice that both of these invoices are going to be for $5. And the reason for that is because I have to exhaust my very first uh, 10 in order to get there. So in my first invoice I had, let's go back into it. My first invoice I had one, let's say on my second invoice I have nine and all of them, basically the one from the first invoice and the second one, they're all going to be, you notice they're very clear multiple of fives. So it, my, my profit margin on this is going to be a very, so let me turn on profit margins because I'll make it a lot easier to kind of understand. So you see how pro, my profit margins in this case, 41%. These are very well defined and this is all based on my first batch but what happens is if in the second invoice I sell more from the first batch and I'll sell let's say 15 what's going to happen is the first nine is going to have one cost and then the next uh, in this case the next six is going to have a different cost so just to run the calculation here real quick before we we see it in there what we're expecting to have is nine of them are going to cost me five dollars each right that's going to carry a cost of 45 dollars and then six of them are going to carry ten dollars each so basically 60 plus 45 what we're expecting to have is a, a, a five for cost of 105 so we're going to just double check to see if that's the result we'll get we'll hit save and close and to no surprise to us that's exactly the result that we got so in a nutshell that is the difference between average cost and fifo 
the last item uh, really worth mentioning is uh, is a, re a report um, here the reports menu and the inventory sub menu is called FIFO cost lot history by item and this is really really cool let me uh, close the other reports here that way we're only looking at, at a single report here and in a nutshell what this report is it, it tells me the history of every single uh, purchase I made with a product and how each uh, lot carries its own cost and here where it says uh, DISB, which basically means distributed to, it basically tells you the underlying transaction in which is extracting the cost and posting it, you know, in, in a financial statement. So, for example, on this on the second transaction here on the bill for 620, this contains six of the items that were sold, and this is kind of what it's telling you. So, if I actually double click on this line, this is the only report in QuickBooks that actually shows you. Two transactions is really neat so I'm gonna double click on this one and what the system will do is it will open both the invoice uh, that's that's causing that cost uh, to to affect that lot you know that those uh, ten dollars per item and it also shows me uh, the bill associated with the ten dollars uh, uh, on that lot so this is a really cool report to kind of see which transactions both bill and invoice actually affected uh, the FIFO cost so I hope this is a uh, this was a good explanation and this uh, helps you understand the difference between average cost and FIFO that only works on QuickBooks Enterprise with advanced inventory. Thank you.